title of this is Shaken or Awaken. It doesn't matter whether you were shaken or awaken. But what's important is that we respond to what God's doing. And, uh, and so we, we find ourselves in a place where we're starting to figure out that many are called, few are chosen is, uh, is not just a, a verse in the Bible that, you know, Jesus just said eight little words and didn't mean nothing by it, but it really means something. And, uh, and here, ever since we've been here, we've always taught process, that this isn't just about saying a prayer and going to heaven. And, uh, and that's exactly what God's been doing in Genesis 45. We're going to look at some things, and we're going to start in verse 6. And this is where Joseph is having a discussion with his brothers. Now, Joseph, everybody if, if unfamiliar with the story, you'd be familiar with the story. We'll just kind of do a little. Uh, Joseph was, had a dream that he was going to be ruler. And that his brothers were going to bow down to him. Well, his brothers thought that was kind of odd. That he was just a mama's boy or whatever. And so uh, they throwed him in a pit. And uh, I know some of y'all got some siblings that you would want to throw in a pit. So you can uh, figure that out. <laughs> and so, uh, But then they lied to their dad. Said his coat was put some blood on it. Said it was his. He got to eat by a lion. And, and then they sold him into slavery, and the next thing you know, he ends up in Potiphar's house. He ends up in Potiphar's house. Then he ends up going to prison. Well, then he goes to prison for a while. Then he interprets a dream, and now he is head of all of Egypt. And that's where we pick the story up, where his brother, a famine came in the land, and his brothers come to Egypt, and now they're standing before their brother, and they've done found out that, well, lo and behold, he is alive. And uh, now Joseph is telling them, verse 6, For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth, and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Now therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now, let me just point some few things out here. Is that this is not this, when he said, God sent me. Now, I can assure you that not everybody in here, when you had a dream of being a ruler, this is not how you would think it would be God doing it. To send you in a pit, then sell you into slavery, then go to prison, come on, be forgotten about in prison, right? Listen, sometimes your influence is going to cost you. See, influence is not cheap. Your salvation is free. Now, we've taught that for years. Say a prayer, go to heaven. That's free. But your anointing and your influence to be able to make an impact is going to cost you. And I can guarantee you, Joseph never thought one time that, God, did you send me when it first all started? Come on. See, sometimes it looks like hell. But it could just be God. Are y'all with me in here? See, sometimes it, it may look like that things are a little off track, but they may just be right on track. Because when we start preaching about remnant, and end times, and we've got all jacked up on that. Listen, remnant is not just an end time message. Remnant has been in the Bible since the very beginning. 
And you have to understand why God has a remnant. And so what we're going to do is, is uh, for years God has been showing us exactly what's coming. And has been showing us exactly where he's taking his people. And for those who have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot who do not hear. And so what I want to tell you is, is that we're going to do a quick little recap. And Joseph is talking about seven years of famine. Listen, when God starts preserving a remnant, things are not always going to be rosy. It could be in the middle of a pandemic. Come on. When politicians are, can't even govern themselves. <laughs> Come on. But listen, a remnant is set aside because God's people have gotten out of alignment with His covenant. And they're no longer do they have influence or they're not making an impact because the presence of God has done left them. Come on, are y'all with me? Let's do a quick little recap. Long before we ever started to gather at DCC and uh, as the body of Christ. And, and I say that because used to, I always said, when we started a church. No, we didn't start a church. We started gathering as DCC to build the body of Christ. Listen, a building is not the church. Come on. What we do is, is we build people into the body of Christ. That's in nobody's... Per Listen, there's not a perfect church out there. And there's not perfect people out there. See, and, and we always say too, you know, I mean, when you go back and look in them classrooms back there, they're all full. And we've always said we're building the church from the ground up. That could never be more true. Because you start at the bottom and you start building the church in those kids. Yes. That's why we need every one of you. That's right. We need every person available. You don't have to be perfect. We just need people that's got a vision to, to say, hey, the church is only going to make it if we grow these kids up in the body of Christ. Let me tell you something. When a bull walks off a trailer, the first thing I automatically do is, is I go straight to the feet. I don't know. I just, that's just me. I do that. I always look at, I always go to his feet first. And those feet and those legs tell me a lot about that bull. Before I even know anything about him, seen any video about him, I start, I go right to the foundation of that bull and I want to see what bone he's got in him. I want to see how light he is on his feet. If he just walks around like an old clumsy Hereford or if he's a little catty. Come on, you can all see that at their feet. And if they got bone to handle the structure, come on, y'all see what I'm saying? It all starts with those kids back there. If we get a good foundation in those kids, the church will last. Come on, are y'all with me in here? And so that's why we say the body of Christ. We gather as DCC. We gather as the body of Christ. We assemble as the body of Christ just under the flag of DCC. But we're building the next generation. Come on. And so... When, when we started gathering as DCC, long before God began to reveal to me how soft the church was and how spooky deep and how out of touch the church was with the people who were broken. I, I'm telling you, I've seen it all over this country. As, as we were going places, you know, and 9-11 was the, was the tipping point for me to not say anything about it anymore. After 9-11, I started telling people, the reason you don't fit in church is because it's been broke. Come on. And I don't mean broke money-wise. Yeah, they all want your money, but I'm just telling you, they've been broke, and they haven't been able to build the body of Christ because they took on a master-pastor theory 
Come on. They left out the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And then all of us men, we didn't fit in church no more. Right? Because we still going to cuss in the cow pens. <laughs> See, we, we just didn't fit that mold of what culture in America, church culture in America became. Come on. It's so broken people. It, listen, we wanted everybody to come to church and be pristine. That's not what it is. This is the place where you come. This is the hospital to where you come to gather, to get healed, to be the body of Christ. With all of our adulteries, with all of our bad emotions, with all of our drunkenness, with all of our addictions, with all of our prostitutions, with all of our, come on. Come on, are y'all with me in here? With all of that, listen, we need everybody in the body of Christ. Now listen to me. If you've got abuse, abusive record, we may not want you in the kids' church right away. We, might use, we need people in the parking lot, too. Come on, we don't mind what your record is. We just need to know. So, come on, are y'all with me in here? I mean, let's just break it down. We're all broken. We're all a mess. You may fit in the parking lot better than the kids' church. It's what I'm saying. Can we just be real? All right. That went over good. <laughs> but listen, and that's the deal. The church had just become too spooky deep and out of touch to be able to heal people who were broken. Listen, sin is sin in the eyes of God. There's no levels. Sin sin. Right? Is that what the Bible says? Because that's what it is. What I need is for you to not give up and quit. No matter what we're going through, no matter where we're at, what we need is for you not to give up. Because I'm telling you, if you'll just stay hooked, God will change your life. God will change your life. And, and, and it's amazing the people that God has changed their life in here. Listen, after 9-11, I'm telling you, it was, it was an eye-opener. You talk about a shaking or awakening, that was it. That was the signpost. The second thing is, we started DCC in 03. And then he began to dealing with me about he was going to change the face of the church. Because the broken leadership that was in the church, the church took on a sheep mentality. Come on. That's the reason most of us men couldn't fit. Is it took on a sheep mentality. And that sheep mentality is what allowed eight people to take a whole entire plane away. Come on. And fly it into buildings. It's what allowed one woman to take prayer out of school. Come on. And so it's what allowed men who can't even govern themselves to govern our country. So see, there was a sheep mentality that snuck in when that's not what God wanted at all. 1 Chronicles 12, 8 says, And from the Gadites there came over to David in the stronghold in the wilderness... Mighty men of valor, men trained for war, who could handle shield and spear, and whose faces were like the faces of lions. I'm telling you, that changed my life. It changed everything because at first, you know, when God starts showing you things that goes totally against regular tradition and the regular old things that's been going on, you kind of feel like, man, this is not going to go over real well. But I'm telling you, God was changing the face of the church from a sheep. Come on, how many of y'all seen all the pictures of Jesus petting the sheep? The little frail Jesus walking around whispering. We've all seen it. We've all, that's what we've, you know, he's looked like he ain't eaten in months. And God says, no, that's not my people. 
My people are supposed to be high above, chosen, peculiar. Come on, kings and priests. Listen, and that's why the world, the, the world does hate us. But I'm telling you, God began to change some things. And he is changing some things. And that's where he's taking us. Listen, he drops one word in my spirit. It's grit. God's remnant in training. And I'm telling you, that's what we've been seeing and going through for the last 16 years. Is God's remnant in training. And let me tell you something. A remnant are a lot of folks who've just had enough. Who know there's more. Come on. The last book of the Old Testament, the last verse before God goes silent for 400 years, says He's going to send forth the spirit of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And then Jesus, when He shows up, He says, if you can accept it, Elijah must come first. And so when He began to show me this, I thought, man, we're going to have to really study this out a little bit. And so, when you go back to looking at Elijah's ministry, Elijah, you know, the story, kills 750 prophets of Baal. He, he says there's not going to be any rain for three years, and there ain't no rain for three years. Till I say so. Then he kills 750 prophets of Baal. And then the next thing you know, he runs from Jezebel because she says, I'm going to kill you. And so now... The, this man who's got God's ear runs from one woman, come on, and he runs and hides 40, go, goes 40 days into the wilderness to the mountain of God, and he crawls up this mountain of God and he has an encounter with God. Now this encounter with God comes after a wind blows so hard that it breaks the rocks. Then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, there's an earthquake. And then the next thing you know, there is a fire that comes through. And it says God wasn't in none of that. But then it says he was in a gentle blowing wind. And he, God says to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing here? Now, how many of y'all know God doesn't need to know the answer to that? And when God asks a question, it's not because he needs to know the answer. It's because he can tell you something. And Elijah's ministry was about bringing correction and order. But what happened was, is you seen the wind, the earthquake, and the fire that had to come in before the presence of God could come. Come on, are y'all with me? So God tells Elijah, listen, you're not alone. I have set aside a remnant, 7,000 men who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. And so then God tells him, says, Elijah, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go anoint three men, Haziel, Jehu, and Elisha. Haziel, he dealt with the apostasy. That is the apostasy is those that are, have lost, they're, they're not faithful. His people who are not faithful. See, they've done God out of covenant. They've done God out of order. And then he says, you're going to anoint Jehu because Jehu's going to deal with rebellion. Jehu come riding up. Jehu was apparently a wild man. He was not your normal guy. And matter of fact, God told him, said, look, when you go anoint Jehu, you anoint him and get out of that house. And he goes and anoints Jehu. Jehu gets in his chariot and he is wide open as fast as them horses will drag a chariot. And they look and they see dust. And they say, "Who? he drives like Jehu. So apparently Jehu had a reputation of being like Richard Petty. And so he comes flying up there to the wall and Je and Jezebel hears about it. She goes in there and puts on her makeup like she's going to seduce. Come on. 
Let me tell you something. There is a seductive spirit in the nation of America. Every billboard, come on, magazines, everything seductive in the eyeballs. Listen, men, I'm telling you, there is a seductive spirit that tries to pull you away. Come on, in pornography, it's so exciting to make that click. Come on, it's exciting to look at, come on, are y'all hearing me? It's everywhere. There is a seductive spirit, men and women. You can be seduced. But let me tell you something, there is anointing in the land right now to kill that. When she went up to that window and she went to batten her eyes, Jehu said, flung her down here, boys. And they flung her down, and he ran over with the chariots, and the dogs ate her. <laughs> right? That's what you do with a seductive, rebellious spirit. Spirit, quit elbowing your wives. There is, there is an anointing in the land right now to bring correction and order back to the body of Christ. Now are you going to respond to it? Because see, Elisha was that double portion. Come on. He anointed Haziel. He anointed Jehu. He anointed Elisha. Elisha is that double portion of the anointing that we need to be a remnant people. Because when you talk about remnant and when you see remnant in the Bible, the very next thing that happens is a multiplication happens. God preserves a remnant to multiply His people. Come on, somebody ought to get a hold of that. That's what a remnant's for. A remnant is not just to hang out and just, oh, bless God, I'm going to heaven <laughs> if I make it. Come on. That's not what it's for. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 27, yet once more denotes the removing of those things which can, can be shaken as of created things in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. That's where we're at. That's what's going on. There's a shaking in the land right now, and it's because everything that we have made, you know, the, uh, all the traditions, all the relig all that stuff being shaken off. And what remains is God. And it may not look like what you thought it was going to look like. We may not get there like you thought it was going to look like. Like God was just going to split the sky and boom, everything going to be good. It may not look like that. Matter of fact, it is not looking like that. It's looking more like pandemic. Come on. Listen, God is doing something. Look in Romans chapter 11. Turn there. Are y'all with me? Romans chapter 11, look in verse 2. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, or do you not know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel. Lord, they have killed thy prophets, they have torn down thine altars, and I alone am left, and they are seeking my life. But what, is the, but what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. In the same way then, there was also, in the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. So in other words, we are all in this together. We don't have to be perfect, but God's grace. We don't have to work. 
We don't have to work for it. We don't have to jump through no hoops. We don't have to wave no smoke around, light no candles. Come on. We don't have to do, you know, six weeks. No, uh uh-uh. We just got to be available. Say, Lord, use me. There's an anointing to deal with unfaithfulness. There's an anointing to deal with rebellion. There is a double portion of an anointing to set things right and in order. Come on, are y'all with me? See, God's, listen, and here's what's crazy. is even in my travels now, I'm hearing God doing exactly what he's doing right here all over the country. It's amazing at what God's doing, what he's been stirring in men's hearts, that here's the deal. We've really only got it in bits and pieces, and then all of a sudden it's starting to line out, and we're starting to see clearly now what God's doing. Some are going to, some are just, listen, a lot of the world, listen, listen to me, a lot of people are going back to the same broke system. Don't give up. Don't quit the church. It's still the best place to be. You might be there to make that change. Listen, don't quit God. Listen, after 9-11, everybody rushed to the church, found the same broke system, and left the very next weekend. Come on, churches were full after 9-11. They were empty the week after. Come on, this time, don't quit God. Get in there, figure out. Let me tell you something. It wasn't easy on the ark, but it was the best place to be when the flood. You were shoveling crap, throwing it out the window. I don't know, but it was still the best place to be. Come on. That's the same with the church. God always prepares a people. Come on. And out of that remnant comes a multiplying. That's what God's fixing to do, y'all. He's fixing to multiply the body of Christ. And it's our job to move this thing forward. Come on, are y'all with me in here? Look in Isaiah chapter 37, 31. It says, And the surviving remnant of the house of Judah shall again take root downward, bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant And out of Mount Zion, survivors, come on, there it is, they're multiplying. A remnant's going to bear fruit. Listen, that's what we need, a foundation. We need a good root system built on truth and on the presence of God so that we can bear fruit upward, so that we can multiply. You put one seed in the ground, you put one acorn in the ground, what do you get? A forest. Come on. Everybody do this for me real quick. Take your fingers and hold your fingers out in front of your head, right in front of your eyeballs. Everybody, come on. This is participation day. Now tell me how many fingers you see. Come on, look at your fingers. How many? How many? Okay, now do this. Put your hands back up. Now look past your hand and tell me how many fingers you see. What? Come on, you see see a lot more now, don't you? See, we've got to learn to look past our certain situations that's going on so that we can see that God's fixing to multiply this thing. We can't get so wrapped up in what's going on right now. Oh my God, it's in times and we're just hunkering down and hiding up and hoarding up. And, no, uh-uh. We, listen, God's always looking forward. Come on, are y'all with me? See, we don't realize that the remnant are those who respond See, we don't respond to that same old broke system, but we go back and we get in right alignment. Come on, are y'all with me? Listen, it doesn't matter if you were grabbed, awakened, shaken awake, or just woke up to all the clamoring that was going on. What matters is your response to what God's doing right now. See, a lot of folks, you got to shake to wake them up. And other folks, they just kind of wake up hearing what's the commotion. It doesn't matter. What matters is our response to it. God, here I am. 
See? See, and, and here's the sad thing is, is that what's going on right now is God is exposing not only the corruption in our government, but he's also exposing the brokenness of the whole system of our church culture. Because a lot of those folks have been prophesying about this end times and this is all, it, oh my God, Jesus is coming back tomorrow and get you all scared. Listen, they're trying. Listen, he may come back before I even finish this. And that's fine with me. But what if he don't? What if he don't come back for another hundred years? Come on. Listen, there's a lot of things that people do to try to keep you coming, keep you giving, keep you hooked, keep you, come on. And people quit being successful for the kingdom of God. Come on, are y'all with me? Listen, we've got to learn how to bear, to, to sink roots and to bear fruit. That's what we need to be doing. God will take care of the timing. The timing isn't ours. The timing's His. Right? Listen, we just can't quit being the body of Christ. See, He's waking us to the, be the change in the body of Christ and to take a righteous stand. Look in Judges. We talked about God calling out the warrior. We're going to go back and visit Judges. Because I'm telling you, it, it's amazing how you can read things for years and still draw out of it when God decides to let us see. Because <laughs> that's what happens. You can read Scripture. How many of y'all read Scripture and then all of a sudden, man, I've read that a hundred times and I've never seen that. That's because God's going, now it's time to show you some things, you know, and you get a fresh revelation. That's why the song says you keep on getting better and better. No, God doesn't really get better and better. We just see him better. Yeah. Right? That was so good, Haley. That was, ooh, ooh, Haley. Verse 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak, that was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the Abzurite, Abz, as his son, Gideon, was beating out wheat in the winepress in order to save it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, said to him, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. Then Gideon said to him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord looked at him and said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? Now, for years, I always thought Gideon was afraid and he was down there trying to bring in the harvest. That's not the case. And what we see is, is that Gideon was a lot like us. He was fed up. He was fed up with the whole ordeal. And Gideon was... Gideon had a get-her-done mentality. Come on. And Gideon, all he's doing is responding to a stirring on the inside of him because when that angel showed up and called out the warrior in him, he looks at the angel and says, Hey, what you're saying isn't lining up with what I used to hear about. One of the things that people 
always, young men would always ask me is where is the God that split the Red Sea? Where is this Jesus that healed the sick, laid hands on the dead and they recovered? Where is, let me tell you something, it's not that they don't love God, they just didn't know Him and they ain't been taught about Him. Bad leadership. Gideon is going through the same exact ordeal that we're going through today is that the priest of the time had done got off track and had done made this whole culture of church come on are y'all with me and now the god the presence of god has left their services the favor of god has left their services what did Moses say when they come out of Egypt? If your presence doesn't go with us, I don't even want to go. Because how is the world going to know that you're our God, that you are God, if your presence doesn't go with us? And now Gideon finds himself without the presence of God wanting to know where is he? Come on, are y'all with me in there? How does a Christian nation get under such attack? Come on. From a socialist, communist agenda, which is so evil in itself, which oppresses people. Come on, that's where we're at here, y'all. If you haven't put all this together, oh, oh, wait a minute, we didn't do our COVID update. Deep, 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 deep. COVID update, soon as the inauguration, two days later, <laughs> miraculously, Washington, D.C. is opened back up for business. Five days later, after inauguration, am I saying that right? Inauguration? <laughs> Close. Five days after inauguration, <laughs> Miraculously, California can't be shut down no more. New York can't be shut down no more. Come on. Chicago. <laughs> I can't even believe they waited five days. They didn't want to look like it was all politics, I guess. <laughs> COVID update. Your pastor got kicked out of Domino's the other day. I'm like, we go to Domino, they go to Domino's, get all the pizzas, they forgot one pizza. So I had to go get a pizza for the kids, and so I'm gone to get the pizza, and I go into Domino's, I said, hey, we forgot to get a, a certain pizza, and they would go, oh yeah, it's right here. It's like, right there. And she goes, well, you can't be in here without a mask. And I said, I, if you'll just hand me a pizza, I don't want to be in, if you'll just... That pizza, I'll leave. No, you can't be in here without that mask. I'm like, hand me the pizza and I'll get out of here. It's just right there. Just, I can see it. It's literally feet away. You can't be in here without a mask. Okay, I'll go through the drive-thru. I leave Domino's. The only guy in Domino's, period. The only other guy in the parking lot, period. The only guy with a cowboy hat on, get in my truck, go through the drive-thru to get my pizza. And the guy, no lie, two people in Domino's, both of them standing there looking at me, kicking me out. I go through the drive-thru, pull up. Can I help you? <laughs> That's where we're at, y'all. We, we are trying in the midst of an out-of-order society to try to get a harvest for the kingdom of God. Come on, are y'all with me? That's where Gideon was, frustrated. The angel of the Lord let Gideon vent. Where is this God? And then here's what he said. Go in this your strength. And I'm like, what? what? What strength is that? 
the knowledge that God is bigger than what's going on right now. Come on, man. If y'all don't hear nothing else I say, the same God that split the Red Sea, the same Jesus that walked this earth, raised the dead, healed blind eyes, come on, raised, laid hands on the lepers, that same God's still alive. Go in this your strength. You need to go in the strength that you ain't got to be perfect. You just got to be available. Come on, that's your strength. You just got to be available. You don't even have to know everything. You just got to say, God, I will. I will. Come on, is anybody in here? I will respond. Listen, it's going to get to the point where you cannot not respond to praise and worship. You, it's going to get to the point where you're walking through the grocery store and then all of a sudden the Spirit of God hits you in the grocery store and you just stop. Let me tell you something. I can remember pulling 18-wheeler coming. It was late at night, and I remember pulling over, coming out of Arkansas. I remember pulling over on the feeder road and just having to stop and just worship God. And I didn't even know why, but I could see this moment. I could see our praise and worship and what it should be and people worshiping and praising God without, come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And it would be so thick inside that truck, I'd have to pull it over and just stop and worship. Did I ever think I would ever be a pastor? Heck no. I didn't know what God was doing, but I knew one thing. I was going to stop and I was going to respond. God, where are you? We don't have to be so spooky deep or so out of touch that, no, we just, just want to worship you. Just you can't get enough. Whoo, come on. Here's what I want. I want to be worshiping in my truck, get pulled over by a policeman, and he passes out because of the glory of God. Come on. I want to be walking through the grocery store. Come on. I'm not kidding you. It happened in Brookshire Brothers one day. There was a couple of little ladies sitting there talking in, they, in front of the bread aisle, on the bread aisle. And they were sitting there talking and going back and forth. <laughs> I just needed to get to the bread on the other side. And the next thing you know, I got my bread. And, and next thing you know, we're, we're, we're sitting there praying. Brookshire Brothers right here in Dayton, Texas. Come on, are y'all with me in here? I'm telling you, God's doing something, y'all. He just needs us to be available. You don't even have to know what to say. I challenge you, walk in Walmart and do this. And see what happens. I mean, if you get kicked out, what is, so what? Who cares? Get kicked. Listen, I've been kicked out of some foot places here lately. It's all right. I, matter of fact, I'm starting to kind of get used to it, and it's kind of comical. It doesn't even make me mad anymore. <laughs> Come on. Where is this God? A remnant is about getting it done. Look in verse 14. Have I not sent you? Oh, man. Have I not sent you? Have I not sent you? Listen, I'm telling you. Start asking God, where are you, what, what are we doing today, Lord? What are we going to do today? And just see what happens. Listen, today there's going to be thousands of people all over America screaming and acting a fool over the Super Bowl. Right? Woo, woo, woo. I mean, we used to dance in the beer joints. Come on. Y'all ever been to beer joints? <laughs> or am I in the wrong place? 
Because there's some of y'all been beer joints, Spook. Don't raise your hand, Spook. You know you've been there. And everybody has acted a fool. Right? We've all done it. Let me tell you, you ain't never seen dancing till you see Holmes do the alligator and the running man. <laughs> ain't nobody clear a crowd out like Holmes. I seen him do it at the Louisiana High School Finals one year. He walked right in the middle of all them kids. He said, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> they, they just moved away from him doing the running man. We call it the Holy Ghost running man now, though. <laughs> Come on, man. We, we were fools. We can be fools for Christ. Gideon knew something was amiss. See, he had heard about the reputation of God. He heard about how big God was. Come on, y'all have all heard it too. Y'all have all heard the stories. Y'all have all read in the Bible, him parting the Red Sea. Listen, what does it say in the New Testament? He changes not. Right? He, he don't change. He can do it. Look what Gideon does. But the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat Midian as one man. So Gideon said to him, If now I have found favor in thy sight, then show me a sign that, is, that it is now, that it is thou who speaks with me. Look what he does in verse 18. And I'd never seen this before. Please do not depart from here until I come back to thee and bring out my offering and lay it before thee. And he said, I will remain until you return. Then Gideon went in, prepared a kid and unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. He put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot and brought them out to him under the oak and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. Then the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. And I thought, correction and order. Correction and order. The first thing Gideon did was tie himself back to the covenant. Because, see, God is a covenant God. And without covenant, come on. We don't get the presence. And so that's why, for the most part, the body of Christ has been so weak and so ineffective in this country is because we haven't learned that we are covenant people and just because we say a prayer doesn't mean we're connected to a covenant. What means we're connected to a covenant is when we do the principles. Come on, y'all. Man, y'all stand with me. When we do the principles that God laid out, and that's exactly what Gideon did. And the angel of the Lord waited for him. He waited. His response was, I'm going to tie myself to the covenant. I'm going to tie myself to the covenant. And he did that. That's why we tithe.
That's why we worship. That's why we... Listen, clapping is a form of worship. Just raising hands is not just a form of worship. Your tithe is a form of worship. You coming to church is a form of worship. Come on, are y'all with me? It's all a form of worship. Speaking, clapping, whistling, making a noise, singing off key. That's me. Right? You don't even have to clap in time. Come on. You, listen, God just said make a joy. Act like you're alive. Let me, and let me interpret that in Liberty County. Act like you're alive. Let the enemy know who your God is. Come on, are y'all with me? <laughs> you can read how that all plays out, but I'm telling you, we've got to a place, and we're getting to a place where we know God can, but God will you. And that's where Gideon was. God, I know you, I know you can, but will you? And let me tell you, that's a frustrating place to be. But what you do is, is you get everything lined back up and you get in right alignment with the kingdom. And that's exactly what Jesus said after 400 years of silence. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. God knows you need a car to get to work. God knows you need a job. God knows you need clothes to wear. God knows you need food to eat. Come on. God knows your kids need a car. God, know, Come on. God knows everything that you need. He already knows before you even ask. But Jesus didn't say, yeah, do all of that and be good about it. No, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and get in right alignment with that and everything else will line up. Come on, are y'all with me? And that's how that works. It's so simple, but we made it so complicated and we find ourselves in this same place See, we're being shaken up and awakened to the fact that none of us are perfect, but we need God. And our response is critical. Our response is critical. And listen, and nobody is too far gone to be used. If you think, go look up Wade's testimony on, on our website. Wade will even tell you, Google me, it's all true. Listen, God can use you. Doesn't matter where you're at, what's going on. God can use you. Father, we come to you. We thank you for this day. Lord, I just ask and I pray right now, Father God, as we move through this time, Lord, I thank you that we're going to be st- Holy Spirit, that you illuminate the things that are going to make us uncomfortable. Uncomfortable to say, hey, man, I know right where you're at. Those conversations that need to be said, talked about, Lord, I thank you. We want to make ourselves available to be used by the kingdom of God to bring correction in order, to say the things that's hard to say. Lord, give us wisdom. Give us understanding. And Father, I thank you as we grow this church from the ground up, we are all a part of this thing. This isn't just one man's ministry. This is your body. And Father God, we thank you that the next generation will see us worshiping you. A living God who can move mountains, part the Red Sea, can raise the dead. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand. 